Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in this YouTube Live. I'm Waller's Wallet. And the other day in the community tab, I posted a question asking people if they wanted to see some examples of award bookings for real flights for people, not just examples of just random ones I pulled. So I asked people to put in a couple of what their flight itineraries were and what points they had as well. Um, and only three people responded. So those three people, I will be going through these award bookings walking through my process i know it's been asked before walking through my process on how i look to book award flights and also just walking you through these examples as well and as always i'll be answering your questions towards the end of this video so you know the way i typically start my process and then we'll get into this in a second but the way i typically start my process is i always look at the cash price typically through google flights and the reason why i do this is that while it's really cool and awesome to tell your friends you transferred 60,000 miles to United and you booked this really awesome flight for, you know, for people who fly coach, the ticket prices in across the world have been pretty cheap as of recent. And if you're someone who has flexible currency, like the Chase Sapphire Reserve or, you know, Chase Holder Rewards and have the reserve or even like the, the preferred, you could potentially be receiving better value for your points uh, by redeeming through the travel portal for these low cost tickets. Um, so I think, and at the same time, it allows us to see certain flight patterns. I mean, let's just see flights. So if you can see that there's a nonstop on a certain airline, it might be better for you to look at that alliance to see if there's a better transfer partner, as opposed to just looking through the internet in different websites looking for it. Now you can also use award uh, award hacker uh, to kind of give you an, uh, a basis, a baseline understanding of what available. Uh, your options are it doesn't show availability. It's not 100% perfect. It does miss certain airlines. So I think it's something to keep in mind as well. So the first person we're going to start with tonight is Aris. Um, and Aris had posted that he was looking for a trip from Miami to Lisbon, uh, Lisbon to Naples, and then back from Milan all the way back to Miami. Now he prefer to have business class from Miami to Lisbon if possible. And his current point totals in order to make this happen was 78,000 American airline miles and 150,000 membership rewards, as well as 150,000 Chase Ultimate Reward points. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'll sh we'll start walking through this process. So looking through, like I said, we're going to start with Google Flights. And I did load this to save a little bit of time. Miami to Lisbon, Lisbon to Naples, Naples to Miami. And these are the dates that he had said, um, or Eris had said. So when you start looking through here, you're gonna see a lot of one stops. You're gonna see though, TAP has a non-stop option. Now, I typically, if given the option, would prefer a non-stop flight because when you have connections, there's an, a possibility something can happen, you know, a delay, cancellation. So anytime you have to touch the ground somewhere else, there always increases that possibility that something could go wrong. So knowing that, you know, this one here, uh, for TAP, great. Now, TAP is part of Star Alliance. I, I know that, and you can look that up as well. I think it is great to know, at least have a reference guide. Maybe I'll put together a reference guide for people to know which airlines are in which alliance. So with TAP being in you know, Star Alliance, this is a great option for us. Now, also something, a fun fact about TAP, they do have a stopover program where you can receive up to five days in either uh, Lisbon or Porto, uh, on your departure or coming back to the US. So it's a great way and it's no at no additional cost. So it's a great way to save money and get a second destination in there. Now you can look, Lisbon and Naples has a nonstop option as well. And this here, you know, you can see you're gonna get a long layover back in Lisbon, but for $975, this is all coach, uh, you could fly. Now, if you were to do this through the Chase Travel Portal and had the reserve, it would only be 65,000 Chase Ultimate Reward Points for this itinerary for three stops and you don't even pay taxes and fees. But you know what, We wanted he wants to fly business class, but we now know TAP offers a nonstop option. So typically what people will start with is United. And as you know, most people should, but unfortunately, and I'll show you this, um, United has been locked. They are not showing award availability for Singapore Airlines, TAP, and even I think it says Thai Airlines. So that really puts a, like, this is a real world example of what, why this could potentially be an issue. And it says it right up here too. Board travel on these airlines are temporarily unavailable. So it's great that, you know, there's potential options. You know, we can see saver availability, but TAP is not available to us here. That's okay. We're going to go to Life Miles because Life Miles is another Star Alliance partner. That's a membership reward transfer partner. 
And I did do a demonstration on Avianca, uh, I think like six, seven weeks ago. I'll probably link that up in the description below after this. So, you know, I was looking these flights up. So here we go on uh, Life Miles here. <laughs> Let me log in real fast. Um, oh, come on, Life Miles. All right. So as Life Miles loads up here. So one great thing about Life Miles in comparison. So if that flight were to price out on United, it would have been 70,000 United miles uh, for that flight, which which is quite high for partner for Alliance partners uh, usability. If it was United Metal, it'd only be 57,500 if I remember correctly. So with Life Miles, as this loads up, it would be 63,000, uh, oh, there we go, 63,000. And you can see it's the nonstop options here, 63,000 Life Miles, which is a transfer partner membership rewards, $5.60. And then there's some booking fees as well for booking online. But Unfortunately, right now, membership reward points are not able to transfer over here because the uh, Avianca just went through a website update, which I feel has been pretty decent. Uh, so this is so while it's available, you can't transfer membership reward points to us, but that's okay. There's actually a better option for us here. And um, I actually learned this when I was going through looking at uh, these these options. So Aero Plan for international travel can pass on fuel surcharges, but it varies based on the carrier. So in fun fact, for TAP, Avianca does not, or um, not Avianca, uh, Aeroplan does not pass on fuel surcharges to customers, which is a really solid option for people. Oh, no, we want to go to business class. All right, it's so like that. Now, <laughs> now this is going to be the best option for business class availability for Aris. And the reason why it is 55,000 points on, on biz, to fly business class. And here it comes, wait for it, about $5 in taxes. So you're flying now business class for Miami nonstop for five bucks out of pocket and 55,000 points, which is a really solid option um, to, for anyone to do that. Now, at the same time, when I was going through, I'll just let you know, I did look through a couple of other options, but we're actually going to stick with Aeroplan the entire way here for booking this entire trip. So right now we're at 55,000 points for Aris for this trip. Now we're going to look Lisbon to Naples because remember we did see that nonstop availability from TAP. So hopefully when we look this up here, I'm going to go to coach on the 21st. We're going to look up for this <laughs> option here and it should price out at 12,500 miles and taxes, which you know what? Here you are details of this flight. It is a nonstop flight, the same one we saw over on Google Flights. Now you're going to notice it's $22 Canadian dollars, which is like 16 bucks US um, and 12,500 miles. So right now we're up to what? 67,500 miles. Now on the flight home, we're going to look back one more. Now on the flight home, I'm assuming Eris is going to take the train from Naples to Milan. Um, it's really easy to use in uh, Italy to begin with. I'm a big fan of the train system there uh, as well. Um, I had a great experience in Italy taking the train. <laughs> now for this part of the flight, you're also, now you're gonna see, here's Swiss economy. Now Swiss is pretty pretty nice in the sense of, 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 a, of an experience. You also have TAP here as well but you're gonna have a shorter layover, um, which actually wasn't there yesterday when I looked this up. So I'm actually gonna select this real fast to see what it would be. You know, so 30,000, but now you're seeing $96 Canadian dollars, which is what, maybe uh, 65, 70 bucks US. But I actually wanna go back to our options here because I don't want this one. And the reason why I don't, because it's gonna be actually be cheaper on Swiss. It's only $81 Canadian, which is 60, about $61 to fly back on economy class on Swiss. So for 97,500 miles, I'm going to go ahead and shop Sharon real fast. Um, so for 97,500 miles, Eris is going to get that business class ticket as well as two extra economy tickets as well and about $80 out of pocket. That still leaves him to... Uh, that still leaves him, what, 150,000 Chase Ultimate Reward points for hotels or for whatever he wants or for a future trip and um, American Airlines. And the reason why we didn't look at American Airlines to begin with when I was looking at them, I think I said, um, I don't even know I said it, um, 
it, right now it's only British Airways or Iberia operated flights. The taxes and fees are higher. The routing isn't great. And my wife actually flew uh, from to Lisbon on, on American Airlines. They fly, I think it's their 767, which she said it was a complete crap plane. So uh, that knowing all that, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, but if you were to look and that was an option you wanted areas, you would actually be able to book a coach ticket if you wanted to wait to see if that business class availability opened. And then you would then you would go ahead and call them back and upgrade to that just for the cost of the extra miles and taxes if there were. So that's how I would go ahead and book that. I'd book completely through Aeroplan on this one. And for less than 100,000 membership reward points, you were flying business class from Miami to Lisbon, then flying coach over to Naples. And then you're taking the train, I'm assuming, up from Naples and then to Milan. And you're flying back on Swiss, which will give you a good ride as well, all for less than $80. And let me see if there's any questions real fast there. Uh, well, quite a bit here. All right. I will get to those in a few minutes. All right. So with that now being all chalked up there, now to, to a quick mention, if United had availability, you could have used the excursionist perk to where you that that Lisbon Naples segment would have been zero miles, but just taxes and fees. The issue though with that right now is one TAP is not available. So if you wanted to book it, you'd have more layovers. And if you were to book business uh, coach ticket right now, it'd be 60,000 United miles and about $133 in taxes and fees I found. So you're paying less taxes and fees. And for only 37,000 miles more, you are getting that business class segment through Aeroplan, which is a better value for you, Aris. So that is what I would do, and that's how I would book that myself. Now, next, we're going to take a look at Roth. So Roth is looking for three people in a lap infant, and she is looking to go from Boston to London, and she said bonus points if I could get her back from Gatwick back to Boston. She looks like she's going for about a month, um, so that's all we're looking for. So I think one thing we need to touch on is for lap children and lap infants. So I'm learning this more as I now have a baby and I will be, you know, in this uh, segment of people who are looking at lap infants. So a general idea is that when you're looking at international flights, and this isn't the case for all lap infants, airlines will typically charge you, a lot of the uh, airlines will charge you 10% of a full fare award, uh, full fare coach ticket or business class ticket for that lap infant. So take, you have to look at that. You have to look at the cost of that ticket, take 10% of that, and then you'll still pay taxes and fees. So this could add up to hundreds of dollars for a lap infant, which, you know, it is what it is, but sometimes there's options, which, are, which I'll show is actually maybe more cost effective and actually gives you a little bit more space as well. And everyone could be happy. So that's where we're, so other things to consider uh, when flying to the UK, Getting to the UK typically isn't the issue. You know, if you fly some of these carriers, you're going to pay the $5 or $20, whatever it's going to be to get there. It's the getting home issue where these taxes and fees become absurdly expensive to where sometimes if you're, well, a lot of times if you're flying coach, using your points and miles through a transfer partners aren't really the best way uh, because it's just, you're going to be redeeming at a really terrible value. So sometimes this is where maybe looking through the Chase Travel Portal or some other uh, travel portal could be re a better value for you by booking that way than actually transfer partners. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I also, when looking at this for you, Roth, I assume with a lap infant, you prefer the least amount of stops as, as possible since it could, you know, when, every time you have a stop, more issues and you have a baby. So let's make this as easy as possible for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. And now from Boston to, all right, now we're gonna check, we're gonna check Google flights. <laughs> And we're going to take round trip. So we have Boston. We're going to make this a multi-city. Boston to London Heathrow. And then London Gatwick. So we're going in July. Uh, now there was some flexibility in her schedule, which is always great. Um, because when you have a little bit more flexibility, it does allow for more options or cheaper prices as well. And I think I still have you coming back on the 31st. <laughs> So we're going to take three adults, one lap infant as well. As this loads up, we're going to look at some other options. So you typically when you look at all these options, um, here we're going to take a look at American as well. Um, American actually charges you 10% of that award cost of a full fare, uh, full fare adult ticket for a infant lap child. So we're going to look from Boston to Heathrow to begin with. 
And they kind of give you an idea, July 1st. Now, at the same time, I'm going to look at Delta uh, because you ha Roth has 250,000 American Airline miles, 131,000 membership rewards, and 240,000 ultimate rewards, which is a hefty total to where she could actually, or Roth will be able um, to use these points. We're going to look Boston to London Heathrow. Go one way, and it's going to be July 1st. And we're gonna do four passengers because you have to call in anyways on um, Delta to book these for lap and fence. Now at the same time, um, Virgin Atlantic is actually a little bit different for lap and fence. So for Virgin Atlantic, they charge you 1,000 miles for if it's coach and from, and you have to pay taxes and fees. But why it's important to note these four, let's pull this up. So, uh, Virgin Atlantic will pass on those fuel chargers. So Virgin Atlantic cheap for miles wise, it's cheap. It's 20,000 miles one way per person for the three adults and it would be 1,000 miles for the infant. But when you click it, when you select this flight, um, oh, I should have, oh, sorry. Mm, I made a mistake there. Refine our search, lap infant, three adults. All right, so now over on Delta for a one way on July 1st, <coughs> Oh, we'll go back to American Airlines real fast. So American Airlines is 30,000 points per person, which you have enough there. But when you start looking at the amount of fees that it'll cost, you can see it's British Airways to begin with. So you're going to pay more money for this flight. But as Delta brings up, so pretty interesting though, Delta is only 25,000 miles one way per person, which is really nice for you. And the reason why this is actually pretty interesting is that if you look at the, the U.S. cost of this that we have to try to take into account for the infant on your lap, it's $2,100, give or take, you know, um, $2,100 here. So it's $216 plus taxes. So you're getting really close to $250 anyways, which would be if you valued Delta points at one cent per mile, then you would actually receive a better, an equivalent value of actually giving that lap infant their own seat. And you don't even have, you can hold them. You could, you just have an extra seat for yourself. So something to consider as we, as we look through this. So oh, where did it go? my first, <laughs> um, now look at, now to fly from Boston, this is this is just laughable. From Boston to London on British Airways, nine hundred fourteen dollars in taxes and fees, and one hundred twenty thousand miles. Complete garbage to do with this, and I would not recommend doing this whatsoever. the 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 way you'd want to do it is you'd want to find American Airline Metal, but even then, you're still going to spend more money. So really, this is this is not a, a feasible option for for someone. Now, Virgin Atlantic. Now, Virgin Atlantic is, in, is 61,000 miles for three adults and one lap infant child and still $447, which is a lot of money to be paying for this, especially when you can book it on Delta one way. The other interesting piece, and we haven't gotten to this yet, I did that on purpose, <laughs> was Air France. So Air France is a transfer partner of membership rewards as well as ultimate rewards. I don't know why it does this, but I always have to go back and click USA. Now, we want to use our miles here. So while Delta comes in as a really strong 25,000 miles one way per person, and if you were to book that for four people, now, you know, it's 100,000 points and 20 bucks, and you have a little bit of extra space. Now, if this happened yesterday, which is actually a pretty, actually is a better value for, for you. So I'm going to pick four passengers on this. Now, Air France, you have to be flying Air France Metal. You have to call into them for a lap infant. But I think this option here is actually a better option for you, Roth. Um, because when you look, that that same flight over on Delta, which was 25,000 miles, is only 22,500 miles per person. So now you're going to be spending 90,000 miles if you were to have four, four seats on the way out. Now, interestingly enough, if you wanted to do business for yourself, it's 56,500 miles per person, which if you were to look at Delta, um, it's not even, is that even an option? Here you go, 86,000 miles per person. So, you know, you're saving yourself miles if you want that business seat. 
if you didn't, if you want coach, you know, you're actually better off. So right now with a lap infant, I'm looking at booking this for four seats. It's going to save me more money up front to begin with, because you're going to pay cash for that lap child. And it's going, you have extra space for that child. Now the flight home, I got, you said bonus points. If I could get you home from Gatwick. So from London Gatwick or from Gatwick, um, there is, we're going to look back at Google flights. Okay. Just so you can see. Now, remember I said I wanted to get you back with the least amount of stops as possible. <laughs> so, and our options here is actually Norwegian. Norwegian does fly that. And I've heard great things about Norwegian. They are a lower cost carrier. And that's something that you do want to keep in mind. Um, but I've heard great things about them. Now, if you had the Chase Sapphire Reserve, now I don't have uh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And, and frankly, I don't even have a premium Chase card to transfer my points out right now. But I'm perfectly fine with that um, because I don't have a need for it. When I do, I will upgrade my card and I will take care of that. <laughs> so if we were to look at the travel side, go to flights. Um, let's see if there's any questions right now as I look this over. Um, um, what is the picture look blurry? I'm not sure why the picture looks blurry, Chad. Um, all right. It, they look clean on that side there. Um, let's look at London Gatwick, Boston, <laughs> and we're going to do July 31st for three adults, one child. I'm going to just select under one and they're going to be in the lab. <laughs> now as this loads up Norwegian is you know 50 you know $502 per person this includes the lap child now as you load that up so if you had the Chase Sapphire Reserve this one here 1506 divided by 0.15 is 100,000 ultimate reward points which it sounds like a lot but that's only 25,000 points per person, including your lap child. And that saves you even more money coming back home. So overall, you know, you're getting four tickets for 190,000 points, which even if you were to do three transfer part or three tickets for transfers and then your lap child, you're spending, you know, $20 in, actually, I'm going to stop sharing the screen real fast. So by doing that, you would, you would be essentially spending what, 40 20, 40, $40 in taxes for one way, and you won't even spend any money back on the way home. So to me, even if you were to book out, let's say on save availability on United or American, you're still spending 180,000 for those three adults, and you're still spending a lot of money for that lap child. So for an extra 10,000 miles total, you pay yourself, you only pay $40. This is a great money saver for you, and on the way out, you get more you get more legroom, and on the way home, you have a nonstop flight back to Boston on Norwegian, which I said I've heard great things about, and that ticket did give you checked luggage as well. So I think that is another option for you. Um, I think I covered everything on here. <laughs> um, you know, and if you didn't want to fly home from London Gatwick on one of those, you could also look at the transfer partners again. But just remember, anytime you fly out of London or the UK, it's going to be higher. So in, in cost uh, for the taxes and fees. If you're looking to avoid that, you can maybe hop over to Amsterdam and fly home from there. Or if maybe there's a flight from Dublin, you can try to fly from Dublin without touching London as well. Something to consider, but I think those options right there give you the best bang for your buck as well as make it the easiest option for you to fly. So lastly, we're going to look at Adam. Adam E is looking to fly from Seattle to Hawaii either in the last week of June or some point to mid-July for seven to eight nights. Um, and uh, he looks like he wants to fly, if possible, into OGG um, as opposed to Honolulu. Um, so, and he has, he has 200,000 ultimate reward points. Now, I am a big fan of diversifying your points. As you can see, that helped out earlier. But, you know, if your Adam is new to the game or early on in the game, it is going to be beneficial to round out those chase points before ro rolling out into other other currencies. But for 22,000 or for uh, 200,000 chase points, we can make this work. So I did a video on Booking Hawaii, I think, last year. Um, I probably need to update it. 
uh, for the most part, because some things had changed as far as like Korean Airlines is no longer a Chase Transfer partner directly, and number and Flying Blue no longer has an actual award chart. But the rest, for that information, it is still pretty pretty current as far as booking everything else. So some things you want to consider um, when looking at Hawaii, uh, for Hawaii. So for Alliance partners with United, or actually we'll pull it up. So with United. Looking Seattle. Oh, actually, I need to share my screen. Sorry about that. All right, let's share my screen. Let's see if there's any questions while this loads up. <laughs> um, all right. So now from Seattle over to and you know what? Let's let's try for OGG because that's what that's what Adam wants. So let's make that happen. Now, I purposely looked at the. What did I pick? So, uh, June 30th. Because that's the end of June. And you'll see why here in a minute. What is going on here? All right. <laughs> All right. United is acting funny. Okay. So with, uh, I'll try this either way again. So Miami, no. Seattle. Come on, United. Get with it. Seattle to OGG. So uh, he wants four tickets as well. So we're going to do June 30th for four adults. Not five. And then we're going to do a coach because he was fine with coach. Um, and for that kind of flight, I think that would be, for me, it's suitable. I mean, I fly coach most of the time anyways. But <laughs> so something that you want to consider for flying, and if you checked Award Hacker, you would see it would say it's 22,500 points on United. Anytime there's saver availability for United flying to Hawaii, you can book that same flight on Singapore Airlines. Actually, let's pull it up. Singapore Air. Um, Alliance award chart. And <laughs> so if you were to look at the Star Alliance chart for Chris Flyers, North America to Hawaii is 35,000 points round trip, which is 17,500 miles one way. So anytime you were to see this 22,500 on United, you have options with Chase Ultimate Rewards to book that through Singapore Airlines. Now, Adam, what I would recommend is if you haven't booked or haven't set up a Singapore Airlines a Chris Flyer account, set that up and add all your family members before you call in or try to book this online. Because Singapore Airlines, you have to have like a family profile, and it's much easier if you do all that background work up front as opposed to trying to do it over the phone with them. Uh, I can tell you that from experience. So from here, I have absolutely no interest in booking on United, knowing I can book that same flight for 17,500 miles on Singapore Airlines. But it actually gets even better because Singapore Airlines last year went into a partnership with Alaskan Airlines. Now, this is important for people, especially which we'll call zone one, which is Washington, Oregon, and California. So Seattle, Washington is zone one. Zone five is Hawaii. So from zone one to zone five, it's only 12,000 miles one way per person. Now, you cannot have a connection to do this, and it has to be on a Alaskan Airlines metal. Now, how do you look for that availability? Because it, you can call them, number one. Or we can check American Airlines. And the reason why you check American Airlines for this is because if award space shows on American, so because American Airlines has access to Alaskan inventory. And if it shows up here, you do need to call in regardless to book this flight. But <laughs> if it shows up here on American Airlines, it should be bookable with your Singapore Chris Flyer miles at 12,000. Uh, miles per person one way. So you see it's saver availability so far. So far we're doing really well. Now, as we lo load in American Airlines, you can see we have a direct flight on Alaskan Airlines from Seattle to Maui. Okay. Now this is great because it's 22,500 American airline miles. It's 17,500 Singapore Chris Flyer miles to fly on United or it's 12,000 500 points to fly this on Alaskan. So for me, I'm calling Singapore Airlines. I'm feeding them this number 
AS861 on these dates for four tickets because that shows availability. And I'm booking that for a total of 48,000 uh, chase points and probably $20 in taxes and fees. So I think that's fantastic. Now, on the way home, it becomes a little bit more of an interesting dilemma because I have you book, I, for example, um, just for fun fact, Adam, if you're listening, this 12,000 point option I did see on 630, which flies into Honolulu or Maui, um, on 74 and as well as 77. So if you were looking to island hop as well, you can do that. We'll talk about that in a second. But those are the dates if you're looking to have a little bit more flexibility, but these did meet the criteria that you had left with me. So on the way home, if you're looking, so now we booked you there for 48,000 points per total for four people. Now, I'm assuming you're leaving from Maui. Um, if, if you're listening, you can go ahead and leave a comment. I'll take a look real fast if you're there. Um, <laughs> nothing there yet. Okay. So it's going to take a look on the July 8th. So with, I just picked July 8th, so you have your time there. And the reason why this is important too is you can see that there's nonstop options for you. Now, I did, Adam did tell me he did have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which is important because for $1,094 for four people, that's 72,000 miles total, or set, we'll say 73,000, it's right about 73,000 ultimate reward points. And for four people, that's 18,200 miles. Now, it's a little bit more expensive than going through this option because on the way home, you can go from Maui um, to Seattle on the 8th. <laughs> now, while this loads up, if you were looking to island hop, um, there's a couple options here for you. So if you want to spend your entire time there, great. If you want to hop over to Honolulu, you can do that as well. And with Chase Ultimate Rewards, there is a partnership with JetBlue and Hawaiian Airlines, uh, which is which is pretty valuable for people if, if at certain times, especially. So from intra-Hawaiian flights, it's 6,000 points per person one way. So if you were looking to hop over, I mean, I think you're an absolute, you're wasting your money completely for business class. It's like a 30 minute flight. So please don't do that. I'm sure you can, you can, you can uh, suffer and coach for, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, but for Hawaii, it's 6,000 miles one way if you were to do inter-Hawaiian flights. So on the way home, um, you can, um, so here we go again. This here for United, it's 22,500. We would book this for 17,500 miles with Singapore Chris Flyer miles. Now I did look on American Airlines. Uh, there is no availability yet for Alaskan Airlines. So that's not an option for you at this time. That doesn't mean it won't come in up in the future. It just means at this moment in time, there is not an option for you to, to do that. Um, and I think the trade-off here for you, if you wanted to take a look at it, is this option, while it's cheaper for you in miles, I and mean, we're talking well, like 700 miles difference per person, you do have a connection in California because there's not a nonstop option for you. And I think that's, that's a trade-off for you. So if you're looking for a better option, you know, it might be worth it. And then you even earn miles for your flight as well. So something you need to completely look at, if you're looking for Honolulu as well, you can take a look at that. But I also, if you're looking maybe Island Hop, using the Chase Sapphire Reserve here for your flight, I'm just going to pick a day for you. Uh, it's all the same price for four people. So for $207 for four people, you pick the flights that you want. That's going to end up being 13,800 points, which is cheaper than trying to utilize JetBlue's chart um, with Hawaiian. That doesn't necessarily mean this is always the case. It could be more expensive for you, which is why it's worth um, why it's worth looking at these options and always referring to Google Flights for this. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, if you were looking for this, Adam, you could wait to see. I would definitely get on the phone with uh, Singapore Airlines sooner than later because once that availability is gone, on Alaskan, it's gone. It might not come back. So for 48,000 points one way, that's, that, that's a great deal uh, to fly from the West Coast. Even better than like, you know, British Airways on American Airlines, which there isn't that option without multiple stops, which is going to cost you more points to try to utilize Avio. So not a great deal to use your Avios for this one here. 
Um, and then on the way home, if you're looking to book that nonstop flight on Alaskan Airlines to begin with, you can do that. It would be slightly more points to do a nonstop. We're talking like 700 points per person and you don't pay the extra $5.60 in taxes and fees to begin with. So that's how I would probably book it because you're getting the similar value to begin with and it's going to save you more. You're going to be home in five hours as opposed to nine or 10. So let me take a look if there's any questions here. <laughs> All right. Um, can I do a video on around the world bookings with A&A to JFK? One section business, one section economy, please. So uh, Javier, if you're looking to do that, um, I actually am working on videos right now. I, I just have to finish shooting it. I've, fin I've finished writing it on uh, around the world itineraries. Uh, pretty much looking at all the big alliances to begin with, kind of break these down for you. Um, but for business class, if just a quick idea of it, if you're looking to do that, you can search ANA's website. You can also search United's website. It's going to be more advantageous for you to look for nonstop flights because you get a limited number of connections or transfers. Uh, same thing with coach as well. And it's going to be a the sweet spot is trying to find because it's distance based, but I'll go into more details about that in the video I'll be doing, uh, soon. Um, hi from Washington State. Hey everyone, how is a hey, uh, hey GZ? Hey Javier, um, why do you think most people should start with United? Well, uh, uh, Javier, I think most people should would start with United. One because it's a great search engine. United is probably one of the better, uh, maybe A and A, but it's a little bit more difficult for people to use. It's going to be a much better search engine to find those award availability for other flights. Now I know they're having their issues with. TAP and Singapore Airlines, and that hopefully gets resolved soon. But it's a really good way to see a lot of opportunities. Using Life Miles, while it's, I think it's improved a little bit, it's still glitchy, and you're not going to see all the options there for you. You know, looking at Singapore Airlines for award availability, it's not great. So United is really good to start for award availability, and then trying to branch out from there to see the opportunities to save yourself some miles. Um, and that's why I think most people should start with United at least to do a word searching. Um, I think because most people would have the CSP is a transfer partner. Um, okay. Um, uh, let's see. My picture looks blurry. Um, I'm sorry, Chad. Um, Southwest is going to Hawaii soon too. Daniel. Yes. Um, Hawaii is on Southwest's radar, which hopefully we'll see flights drop. Uh, the cost of flights drop. Remember with Southwest points, they're based on the price of the ticket. So you're not going to receive oversized value for your Southwest points. And if you're someone who has a Chase Sapphire Reserve, you might be receiving better value using that through the Chase portal. Because not only do you receive, you know, you don't have to pay the taxes and fees on it. You also will need to, um, you'll also earn miles for South, your Southwest flight as well. So it's kind of a win-win in those situations. Definitely run the comparisons though, because it could be great, uh, slightly better to use the transfer partner avenue as opposed to the chase travel portal which actually if i remember correctly maybe they're having difficulty with southwest i'll have to double check that though have i heard about anything with american uh, express's airline gift card reimbursement issues um i'm not sure which one you're talking about roth if you're talking about i mean as far as um <laughs> let's see um it's like as far as Delta, if you purchase in $50 increments, it should trigger that. The uh, American Airlines $100 increments should trigger that. Southwest, it should trigger as well. Um, I believe with $50, maybe $100 as well. Uh, but if you're looking to purchase like other airlines that are up, like uh, other airline gift cards that could trigger it, like United, it will not trigger through the, M the MPX app or through gift card purchases or even through the registry anymore. So it depends on which airline you've selected. Uh, thoughts on getting four business cards with Chase, trying to think, uh, getting in, uh, to you, United Business, 75. Um, I would, Roth, I'd be careful being that uh, aggressive with Chase uh, to begin with because they have been shutting people down for being too aggressive. Can you get four business cards? I mean, maybe. Um, I would just be very cautious with Chase in that if you're looking to get points, you know, definitely maybe if you have a, a second player in there to maybe open some chase cards as well, you could definitely have that possibility. Cheapest way 
business class fare with Thailand to uh, with you are. Um, I would think with Thailand, I have to double check, Chad, I'll, uh, from New Jersey, you know, I think for low cost as well. I mean, you could look at Singapore airlines, but they're going to pass on fuel surcharges, um, United as well. Um, I'll double check that. Leave me a comment down below and I will check that out for you. Jeffrey sent a free credit card console about a week or two back. Um, Jeff, did I get back to you, Jeff? I, I didn't get a message for it. Um, I apologize for that. If you want to shoot me an email, Jeff, I will get to you on that because I would I try to get to all my information as far as free the credit card consoles because I do want to help you out. So um, shoot me an email, Jeff, if that's the case, because I have responded to all of them that I have received. Um, Waller's Wallet at Gmail. I'll put it in uh, the description as well. I do apologize for that if it didn't come through because I've responded to those typically within 24, within 24 hours. I've typically responded back multiple times to people who have reached out. Um, the SBG business worth the minimum spend while working for 524 with recent devaluation. Um, you know, the SPG business card, I think it, uh, it was, it's going to be going up to a hundred thousand soon. If I remember correctly, um, it's, you know, it's not going to trigger your 524 or go towards your 524. So I think it's an opportunity to earn some points with it. You know, even with Marriott's devaluation, which I'll probably have a, rant video first about, you know, Marriott and their just crap of a merger and all the other crap they're doing. Um, you know, they are 75,000 points. You can turn that into airline miles. You can, you can, you do, there is still some value in there. You just have to tailor your expectations with them. You're no longer going to receive the oversized SPG value that you once did because the points are now super inflated. And now, um, also speaking of that, March 5th, the uh, new award category does go into effect. So you definitely, if you're someone looking to book some Marriott properties before that category eight goes into play, I would definitely book those sooner than later. Um, <laughs> let's see, is it worth, but you know, I, I think if you're looking for something and you're kind of on hold from Chase Roth, I don't think it's a bad card uh, and it doesn't hurt your 524 status um, as well. And it does help you get some airline miles if you're looking to kind of up your bonus for we'll say United because you can turn that in. I think you get a 10% bonus as well. Thanks for listening. We should start with United. Um, no, hey, no problem, Jeezy. You know, I, I, I'm always happy to help. So I think I've answered all the questions. Are there any? Did I miss any questions? If you have any questions, let me know now. Um, you know, my plan is to do some of these. Pro I'll probably post this question again, uh, probably next month to see if there's people who would be who will put down some examples. You know, I like doing these live examples for you and answering your questions. You know, I think it does show, also helps me learn as well because, you know, I see some things that change as well. I don't check these programs all the time. I do stay up on them, but not, I'm not checking, you know, every single word program every single day. So Aeroplan, 75,000 EVA through TAP. Other programs are similar. <laughs> um, I'm assuming you're responding to something up, not up top, Lionel. Um, so, hey, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this YouTube live. Um, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up or if you know somebody who might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them. And if you wanna help support the channel, a simple way is to use the links on our website or on the, on the, on the website or even in the description below. I uh, remember I post new videos every Thursday. So if you like learning about credit cards, points, miles, cash back, or just flat out traveling for less, consider that subscribe button down below. And I will see you all this Thursday. Safe travels, take care everyone.